Good afternoon. It's Thursday, April 16th, 2020. And today I want to share with you about what Islam means to me. Because I have a very powerful memory of what it means to me. And it's because many years ago, I don't remember exactly when, but about 20 years ago, when I first began teaching English overseas, one of the first places I was teaching was in Turkey. Um, I was at an English school in Istanbul. Um, it, was, it wasn't a very good English school, um, but it was my first uh, experience. I mean, they didn't treat uh, the teachers very well. They didn't treat the students very well. But the teachers and the students were wonderful. It was just the school administration, which was pretty awful. Not always uncommon with ESL schools. But anyway, Istanbul was wonderful, that huge, sprawling city in Turkey and all. Um, and so I taught there for a semester. I, I, know I was there for several months and all. And when my job ended, um, I had already lined up a new uh, teaching job, which I was hoping would be even better. Um, and it was in the Sultanate of Oman. Um, don't know if you know your geography, but it's near uh, Saudi Arabia uh, and just north of Yemen on the Arabian Peninsula. Um, and I was all lined up there to teach... Um, TOEFL, the test of English as a foreign language, at a uh, technical college uh, in Oman. And they offered a very nice contract and all. Everything, all expenses paid and all, including the flight from Istanbul to Oman, which was making a stop in the uh, Persian Gulf country of uh, Bahrain, I believe it was. Well, so I went to the... I packed everything up and I've, I had all my um, luggage with me at the, I think the name of the airport in Istanbul is Ataturk uh, Airport. Um, so when I was getting on the plane, I could see out on the tarmac that they were doing some sort of construction or something. I don't know, they, there were bulldozers out there on the runways and all, and I thought, oh, that's not a very good sign, you know. So I said to the um, ticket person uh, before I boarded the plane, I said, I have a very long flight uh, from Istanbul with a stop in Bahrain and then ultimately arriving in, I think it was the capital of Muscat uh, in Oman at around 10 o'clock that night. And I said, it's very important that I make that connection in Bahrain to get to Muscat because... The, my new employers are going to be meeting me at uh, at the airplane uh, in at at the airport in Muscat, and they said, "Oh no 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 problem at all. We'll we'll make sure we get you there and all." Yeah, so I got on the plane, and wouldn't you know? I don't know. They delayed taking off because of the construction on the uh, on the uh, runway and all, but we finally took off, and. So we landed in uh, Bahrain, no connecting flight to Oman. I mean, I, I saw it coming, you know. And so I, they finally got me reconnected on another flight from Bahrain to Muscat. But by the time I arrived in Muscat, it was like midnight. And the airport was closed. I mean, lights out, everything had gone home midnight. So I'm walking around the airport, uh, you know, and I don't speak Arabic, you know, and uh, everything was closed and all the other passengers from the plane had gone on. No one from the school was there to meet me, you know. Um, so I was walking around and I saw this kiosk thing and the lights were on in it. It was like a car rental uh, place. <clears throat> and I went
went in and this man dressed in Arabic drag, um, I'm trying to explain to him with my best pantomime in English and all of that, that, you know, I, I'm stuck here. I mean, I, I, no one's here to meet me. Plus my luggage didn't arrive for fuck's sake. What a nightmare. So I'll never forget it. This man, I don't, I'm not sure how much he understood in my frantic English and pantomiming and all. He took me from the airport to a hotel nearby, right next to the airport and all. He booked me into the hotel overnight. And it was like a commuter hotel. It wasn't big or fancy or anything, but it was, it was a place to stay for the night, you know. And he paid for it because I didn't have the Arabic money. I think I had my Turkish lira with, with me, which they didn't accept because, you know, the um, currency exchanges, they were all closed, you know. So I had a place to stay for the night and I was able to shower and, you know, uh, I may have had a, a bag of overnight things. I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, so I got a good night's rest and got up and the, called the school first thing in the morning and I said, thanks for not waiting for me, you know. Uh, wasn't a great way to start my my gig there. Um, so I, I don't remember how I got back from the hotel to the airport. It wasn't that difficult because it was right nearby. Um, and the people from the school were there. My luggage finally, uh, I think, was there in the morning, so I was able to collect that and all of that. And I did go back to, once I had some I had local money and all of that, um, to that kiosk to thank the man for helping me through all of this. But also I wanted to pay him for, you know, whatever uh, expense he uh, incurred. He wouldn't accept it because that's what Islam teaches, to take care of strangers, you know, and that's what they did. So whenever people ask me about Islam and all, I tell them that story and it's absolutely true. Be fabulous.